Hello everyone, welcome to my first Rhino tutorial. Um, I'm doing this uh, specifically because I received a question uh, about how to unfold an object. A uh, person had trouble uh, doing all the, the, the regular steps that they know, and so I suggested kind of a back, uh, backdoor method of hacking it together. So I'm going to share that with you today. And this is splitting objects in Rhino. So. Hope you guys can see that. Check it out. Perfect. Okay, so there's the signature. This is brought to you by Insal Monka, a special pioneer YouTube account. Um, anyways, so I made a couple objects here, uh, very much Food Network style, and I'm going to run you through some of the steps. So, a lot of my work just starts simply with a single line. Let's look there. Let me hide some of this for now. Yeah. yeah. Please forgive my uh, informal nature. This is my first one that I've done. Go ahead and right click some extent. So there we have it. Uh, this, don't pay attention to that. It's the later form of this. I'm going to actually have to work in wireframe on uh, a lot of these simply because a lot of the cuts that I made are very large and the meshes don't like... It's, it's just extra work for the uh, program to do so you know I, I definitely like uh, working in this shaded form but if I were to put that I'd probably be sitting in front of my computer for a couple, couple minutes you know and give you that dead time so Anyways, I started with a single line and made an array. Uh, it's, you know, one foot spaced out six inches apart, 12 high, 12 across. And then I just went over here to my um, control point, uh, control point curve, not control point three curve. I like that one because if you look here, the nodes that I attached we're just all at, you know, completely random spaces, you know, midpoints or endpoints on all these lines. However, not it doesn't create this jagged edge, it creates this nice kind of flowy curve to it. Um, so I just chose this random pattern to show you how you can uh, split up objects that don't necessarily have orthographic projections that might be a little bit more difficult. So uh, this would look a lot better if it was shaded, obviously, but here's my tube that I made. Let's see what about it. There's my tube that I made out of this just using this uh, this pipe tool right here. I did a, a two inch diameter on that. Maybe a little bit four, I can't remember. Anyways, so once we have that, I made a line, it's a single line that I extrapolated out on my array. Um, with something like this, it's extremely uh, useful to do a lot of curves and a lot of uh, closely spaced curves um, since there's so many twists and turns in this object by you know just doing that one, and that one, and that one, and that one, you lose out a lot of information. So uh, yeah. I'll show you another couple ways to do this. It's it's not that hard, but I like I like uh, the array tool. Sometimes it gets a little funky. So you know, I'll just make that mirror it, copy, 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 copy. Anyway, so once you make all your curves, you're going to go ahead and uh, hit this button right here, which is the extrude planar curve. Uh, if it's all the way at the bottom of the model, you can just do single side. Sometimes I like to do my curves right in the center, so I would do both sides. Really doesn't matter. That's not the direction that you want it to go, so you want it to go right and left. You go ahead and click that. Anyways, once you extrude all those, you're going to have a ton of surfaces right here. Oh, also, once you uh, once you extrude them and do that, you have your curves. It still leaves the. No, I'm sorry. You have your uh, surfaces. Uh, that still leaves your curves highlighted. I generally like to delete those just so that way they don't interfere when I'm selecting everything else. Um, let's go ahead and do that. So yeah, so I don't have any curves in here, just surfaces. 
So what we're going to do here is grab that and then type in SPLIT and see it uh, highlights it for you. And go ahead. So by selecting this first, it already notes that you're going to split this. You don't necessarily have to do that. You can just hit split and then select that. However, uh, oftentimes when you're working uh, with models that have more than one surface or they're not completely adjoined, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit tough to see the trees and the forest here. You, you have all this interference while selecting. Anyways, you're going to uh, do that again. Split. Yeah, see, there we go. So you split. That's the objects to split. You can also click more objects as well, but uh, not necessary. And you press it again, and you select all of your cutting tools. And then you hit spacebar. I'm not going to do that because it's going to uh, bug out on me. Oh, I didn't save another model of it. Uh, okay. Well, anyways, I can just show you on this. Basically, once you split all of it, you have the exact same model that looks like this, except each of these segments align across these dark cut lines that you see. And so what I did here is I started with a single curve. And I, you know, truthfully, if you're going to do this for a project, I would recommend paying a little bit more attention than I did here because I used just one size, and obviously that does not fit all. Um, if you're trying to present how this would look at different depths, you're going to want a lot of distinction between these depths. I'll get more into that, more in depth with that later. Um, and so anyways, what you want to do is, let's see, highlight, I like to, if you right click, actually let's do this, if you, uh, if you left click on this yellow one, it goes directly to the middle, if you right click, it goes to all four, um, it's really handy a lot of the time, so anyways, uh, which one did I do this one? Right. So I was going to do this again for you with the already cut model, but I, I guess I missed out on them. So what I like to do is keep my marker in place in one screen and my model in place in the other. And you're going to just simply deselect one side of that, hit M, shortcut for move, click one side, over to the other. And what that does is it you see how it actually shifted. Actually, I think that shifted back this way. That way, yeah. So basically, you're moving the model apart from itself, and this this will be a little bit more dramatic at, when the models completely together because you'll you'll get to see the uh, it slowly break apart into all of its pieces, um, and then you just highlight that. If by the off chance you forget to. Uh, you forget to move one while you're going like that, you, uh, you'll see it's still highlighted in its place right here. If you forget to do that, my suggestion is just bring it back a step, deselect that, deselect, make sure you're all in a line, and then just go ahead and move it again. Um, one awesome thing about Rhino is that it has, oh, well, it just proved me wrong. Oh, wait, no, you have to exit that, sorry. Uh, as long as you're not in a command at the moment, you can backtrack. Uh, I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> it gets weird. But uh, generally, you have the ability to backtrack you know, hundreds of steps, which is kind of nice. But I think you can't, you can't just open the uh, project and then do that. So yeah, so uh, once you get these things completely spaced out, it makes for a nice little make two-dimensional viewing that I'll actually show you a little bit later at the end. That was my first object. We're going to get a little bit more complex now. Uh, yeah, I'll just show you the finished version of that one right there. So this is, this is the make 2D command M8 yeah, right there, make 2D. Um, it gives you the option of showing the hidden lines or not, and uh, with this one I opted not to and figured it would uh, 
make a little bit more sense. But yeah, again, as you see, since everything kind of extends over everything else, it just kind of becomes this mass of information that's not needed. See, when you space out things like this, it looks better. Alright, so I'm going to look at my that scenario. Oh. Oops. F1. Very useful. If you ever get stuck, F1 is great. Um, thank you. Not needed. So for this one, I just want to take uh, a bunch of surfaces and just, you know, I did a, a rotate on all of them in either the 3, 6, 9, or 12 in you know, plus or minus either direction, just kind of pick it randomly. Excuse me. And, you know, came up with these surfaces. And, yeah, like this is what I mentioned with the uh, deleting of the curves. Is, you know, oftentimes if you're trying to split or something, you don't want all those curves in there because it's just going to be one more object that you're going to need to need to get rid of or deselect. So I guess I didn't do it in this one either. Wait, uh, this example is supposed to show you how I deleted all those curves, but I guess I didn't. I guess I didn't do it. Oh, I remember what happened. I had a redo my model. Anyways. So, you know, just did a, off that random thing, I did a mirror point. Did a mirror point right off that edge to make the second one. Did a mirror point right off this edge to make this back piece. And then I just highlighted that and kind of highlighted all of these and kind of just shifted them over like that. Or copy the most, I should say, to duplicate and get this thing. And then from what I, here, I just highlighted everything and hit join. And what it did is it actually separated between the surfaces, well, the surface now and the mesh. Uh, and the important thing is is that the mesh cannot be split. Uh, I don't know why. At least not with uh, not with this tool right here. There's actually a lot of stuff you can do with this mesh. That's really cool. Uh, you just need to add add more toolbars. Let's see, yeah, mesh, mesh buildings, mesh tools. Um, I think they also have an analysis, a texture mapping, which is really fun. Um, one thing that I just found, which is kind of cool, is uh, GIS point. I can't remember where I put that, where that is. Anyways, you can pick all these things. You can add your surface. Oh, actually, I do need that. I forgot to put that back. And you know, you just have all these easy to use tools right at your right at your disposal. And you can actually make as many of these toolbars as far down as you need, or you could just leave them hanging. Put them up to the side. Of course, sometimes if you mess around with them too much, you mess up your settings. Sorry, I'm rambling. Anyways. So yeah, so you go ahead and make the line. It's very important to have uh, a single line that goes all the way through the model. Uh, and for this one, I made that line, and I made it an array of 12, uh, spaced at two inches apart. But that obviously wasn't enough. So I can I have a couple options. I can do another array, or I can do deselect that one, hit mirror, bring that over. And by deselecting the first one, you don't duplicate it. You don't have a second line there. Or what you can do is highlight some, however many you want, the entire thing, or all. Hit copy. And then go to the one just to the right that you deselected. Bring it over there. Again, you don't want duplicate lines. So you just go ahead and delete the ones that don't pass through anything. Once again. Highlight all these. Go ahead and extrude a curve. This side you are gonna want both sides on since it's since I have well at least I do because I have my lines directly in the middle. Go ahead and make that and go ahead and hit delete. See this is a more dramatic version of that because 
every time you would click, you would get those those curves as well. Oh, it's very important not to click and drag these mess up your uh, alignment. Anyway, so go ahead and select the poly surface. Once again, we hit split, select all the objects, and hit spacebar. If you have a really complicated object, go use that time to go ahead and get yourself a cup of coffee, stretch your legs, stand up for a little bit, and generally make yourself a little bit more healthy. Um, so, I really should have left that model. I guess I did. Once you space it out, again, with this one, I, uh, I was just kind of rushing it. So, with this, what I did simply, there we go, I used the uh, front screen, and as you see in the unbroken up piece, you'll get this with the thick black, uh, thick black lines that separate for each, and I just highlight all of them, deselect that, hit move, shifted it up, deselect that, Hit move, shift it up, do select that, hit move, shift it up, repeat. There's a lot of monotony when you do this step. Um, so, anyways, so yeah, that kind of looks like that. So, I think that's kind of fun. Might want to print that just as a little art piece. But again, another reason why you want to do it right the first time is because once you hit make 2D, it takes that three dimensional object and guessed it, made it two-dimensional out of curves. So there's a lot of these, and so sometimes when you want to select little pieces, it makes it very difficult to. Alright, and then lastly I realized that those two uh, designs were fairly, I don't know, complex, unrealistic, just they were more dramatic versions of, of the process, and so I figured I would just do a simple sphere. Uh, my bars on, I can't see what I'm doing. Yeah, so I've just, you know, made myself a sphere. Sphere, sphere. Uh, the cool thing about this, well, the cool thing about Rhino in general is that there's always, always, always more than one way to make any object that you want to do. So, you have more control over it, you also have uh, a few more options, you know. Some people don't like doing three-point curves, some people like doing 64-point curves. Uh, it's you know, all however you want it. But yeah, see, that's the shaded version. It's a lot easier to work in. But, of course, when you have shaded and you're going to uh, pick your splitting object, yeah, makes it just a tad trickier. But with a single surface like that, it's not a problem. Um, this is the artist that one. Nope. Okay, so yeah. Uh, what you do is you highlight your object. SPL. Truthfully, SPL is all you need, but. Sometimes if you type in too fast, you can misspell in just as you need to do. So you hit split, select the cutting objects right here. Go ahead and hit enter. Since this is a really simple one, I can go ahead and do this in front of you because it just it doesn't take much. You saw how quickly that was. So I'm doing do it once more. Totally no issues. So you know, if you're, if you're designing a house or, or something that that's not too uh, crazy, like the curves that I showed you before, this is a really, really well, pretty much the only way that I do my uh, section lines and all that. I delete that. So yeah, so what you're left with is this mess. And from here, you have a couple options, um, especially if you're dealing with floor plans. What you're going to do is highlight everything and hit this button right here, which is cap planer holes. And uh, that'll cover any hole that it possibly can um, in a lot of. Uh, in a, so go ahead and delete that. So you see right here, it's actually just got a flat edge. 
in the end rather than uh, uh, we'll do the opposite extract surface. So rather than kind of like an empty saucer, just a single no dimensional, well not no dimensional, but it has no realistic weight, I should say. But anyways, once again using the move method, I shifted all of these over. Uh, I picked this line, this one's my most uh, precise measurement, I should say, because this is actually uh, five inches off both edges of the total uh, circumference of that of diameter. Um, and I also took the midpoint and made another end here. So basically this is one, uh, a half, and then three quarters. So I was able to manipulate it. Some of these would line up directly behind the other, and so I would move it over just another half or another quarter to get my total design right here. You know, we'll bring these in AutoCAD and they'll look great. Uh, we bring oops, 5,272 objects. <sighs> I'm just going to take a point right here and mention that you should really pay attention to the template that you start this project in. Um, it'll give you the option of starting large objects or small objects in millimeters, inches, and feet. Uh, and if you try to design something that's you know, 100 feet in any direction on inches or millimeters, your computer will crash. Your program will crash, and you will not be able to open that file be completely, uh, completely corrupted. So. Let's go. Well, I guess. <laughs> oh, great. Rhino not responding. Well, I guess I'm just going to end my uh, broadcast. Oh. Good boy, Rhino. Yeah, and especially if you have a lot of objects strewn all over the place. I think I did this one in inches. Because I was initially only going to do this first piece, but I kind of got a little carried away. Um, so yeah, so you know, this is just one method out of many methods that you can use to uh, make a two-dimensional line drawing out of a three-dimensional image. Um, but of course, paying attention and doing it right the first time is always a plus. So anyways, thank you again for watching. Uh, I hope this made sense and was helpful. And I hope to see you again. Cheers.